Uh, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the SBEC which is the Small Business and Entrepreneurship Center of the Dennis and the Nora Foretia Foundation, the SBEC Business Plan Training. So we are going to be having a training today, like the title says, on how to develop and create a business plan. So our trainers for today, we're going to have, first of all, Madam Free Asanga, who is Chief Operating Officer at the Foretia Foundation. And we are going to also have Sylvia Namondo, who is SBEC Associate at the Foretia Foundation. And I also want to remind everyone that there is a chat box. If you touch your screen and look to it towards your right, you're going to see a place that allows you to chat. So in the course of presentations and in the course of our trainers teaching, if you have any questions or you have anything you would like to ask, please kindly write that down on the, in the chat box and we'll read that out at the end of the training. So without wasting much time, I'm going to invite Madam Free Asanga to have the floor and give us the objectives of this training. Thank you. Thank you, Ansel, and welcome everybody to the training of the SBEC Network on how to elaborate a business plan. Uh, before I move on, I would like to tell a short story about Peter and Paul. Uh, Peter and Paul are two friends living in the same neighborhood in Yaoundé. So one morning, Peter got up, dressed up, put on a good suit, left the house, and took on to the road. When he got to the junction, he turned left, and right and decided to go right. Moving right, he took a bike that cost him 300 francs. But unfortunately, after having gone about three kilometers, Peter decided, realized there was a roadblock. So he had to pay another 300 francs to turn back, came back to the main road, took a taxi on his way to town without a destination. He told the taxi man, when we get to town, I'll tell you where to drop me. On getting at Marche Central, Peter decided to come out of the taxi, paid the taxi man 250 francs, got to Marche Central and strolled around. Having strolled around for a while, he decided to go back home, but said, I cannot come all the way to the market and go back home empty handed. So he decided to buy a packet of sugar for 800 francs. He took another taxi for 250 francs and returned home. His friend and neighbor, Paul, on the other hand, got up in the morning and decided to go to Marche Central to buy a packet of sugar. So Paul knew what he wanted to get for the day. Paul thought about all his options. He could go by bike, but the bike is more expensive than a taxi. He could go by taxi or he could walk. Having evaluated the cost of taking the taxi, 250 francs to Marche Central and 250 francs back, Paul decided to walk. And in his mind, he said, as I'm walking along the way, I will check. Maybe I can find the sugar. I might not even arrive at Marche Central. So Paul took on foot. He went down the road, he walked. Having walked for about two kilometers, he came across a shop where there was a discount on sugar to encourage Muslims during the Ramadan period. So Paul walked into this store and bought a packet of sugar at 650 francs and he walked back home. Now, when we look at Peter and Paul, at the end of the day, they all arrived at the same objective. All of them brought back home a packet of sugar. But Peter spent more time. He spent more money, about 1,100 1, francs, to get a packet of sugar for 800 francs. Paul, on the other hand, spent nothing and caught a packet of sugar below the, price, the selling price of 800 francs. Why? Because Paul had an objective by the time he was leaving his house. Now, as we go through this course today, 
I would like us to reflect what kind of entrepreneur we want to be. Do we want to be like Peter or Paul? Um, I'll begin by outlining, giving the outline of our program. We'll begin with the importance of a business plan, the components of a business plan, which are the background and purpose, product and service, market analysis, marketing, strategies, operational plan, organization and management, financial projection, risk factors, cover page and executive summary. What is a business plan? A business plan is a document containing your business goal, operational and financial projection of your business, how you intend to achieve these goals and the duration of time. And in order to, you know, and when you have a business plan, it has a lot of importance. It helps you to convince your bank or an investor that there is a market for the idea that you are bringing and, and the problem that you want to solve. And it helps you to make big spending decisions because as your business grows, because as your business grows, you're going to face a lot of problems like increasing your employees, increase in your rent, expansion, expansion. So reviewing your business plan constantly. Reviewing your, reviewing your business plan constantly will help you to know when to make these decisions. And also, it helps you to monitor your cash flow in order for you not to run into crisis. You help you to monitor your cash flow in order for you not to run into crisis. Because as you make big spending decisions, you have to carefully monitor the forecast that you have created from the beginning. If not, you are going to have a lot of cash problems. Also, it minimizes your risk because when you start business, a lot of uncertainties which you are signing for and you do not know, and these are your competitors, these are your competitors, and your operations, your customers, and you don't know all of this. But when you have your cash, when you have your business plan that you always go, you will help you to uncover a lot of uncertainties and it's going to reduce your risk because you're going to create a contingency plan that will help you to overcome them. And also it proves the viability of your business because today many businesses are created out of passion. Passion is a great motivation, but in the business world, you need to transform. The, there is a difference between concept and reality. So you need to prove that your, that your vision can be transformed into a business idea. Now we're going to move into the main part, in the first part of our training, of our business plan, which is the background and purpose. It's very important. This is a very important aspect of your business plan because you'll be telling your story to date, how you, how you started, what are the successes that you have faced when you are writing the background and purpose of your business plan. The background, of, the background and purpose of your business plan is, divided, is supposed to be divided into two Section, section for the promoter and the section you talk about your business. Concerning the promoter, the promoter are the, is the owner of the business, and it can be a, this can be a sole proprietorship or a partnership. In the promoter, you have to give the name and occupation, your educational background, your comp, the, the companies you have worked in, the companies you have worked in. What are your technical skills? You have to mention all of this. This is very important because it's. This is very important because it, it helps your investor to know that you have the, 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 the professional background to execute whatever you have put in your business plan. So it's very important to narrate if, if you have whatever qualification, whatever experience, it's very important to put it in this part of your business plan. 
concerning your business, presentation of the business, what is the name of your business, what is your business all about, you need to write it in this part, you need to put the type of a business, is it a sole proprietorship, is it partnership, where is your business located, what are the objectives, because before you write a business, before you identify a problem, you have an objective, is it to train people, is it to help people who are in the informal sector, you must have an objective, so here you need to detail the objective why your product is never your market, and who are your target markets? Who are you planning to target if you're in a consultancy firm or you're in, who are you targeting? Who is, what is the age group? Are you targeting youths? It's very important to include it. How are you going to compete with similar competitors? Because when you bring the idea, there are other people who are already into that line of business. So on this section, you are going to talk more about all of this. You have to give a description of the product you're planning to offer, how your product is, is going to be priced, the sales issue you're going to use, what are the intellectual properties that makes your, your, your product unique, your, is it your trademark, your legal issues. You need to address all of this in this section because there will need to be something that uniquely identifies your product. So in this section, you have to talk detailed about all of this in, the business, in your business plan. The market analysis, what is the market and the market analysis? All of us today, we know that the market is a setup where buyers and sellers meet to engage in the exchange of goods and services or information. But when you are writing your market analysis, you need to detail this, you need to, you need to give a detailed statistics of the industry in terms of size, in terms of size, the growth rate, how is the economy evolving? What are the trends? How is the trend? How are the trends changing? And the outlook? You need to write detail on all of these. You need to talk about the gender. Are you targeting male, female, both? What are the age group? The income level, lifestyle preferences. You have to include all of these and do a market test. Give a market test result because before you started the business, you must have you must have done used a questionnaire and sample to know. So you need to give an evidence based on your test results based on the initial investigation you did before writing your business plan. You need to talk about the lead time. There is some, if somebody buys something from you, how long will it take to get to the customer? What are your competitive, what, who is your competition? You need to know because before you eventually, there are competitors. So you need to know who is your competition, what are their strengths, what are their weaknesses that you have realized? And what are the potential, what are the, what are the disadvantages? Because before you venture into any business, there must be roadblocks. So you need to mention these roadblocks that are preventing you from entering the market. When you talk of marketing strategy that you are going to use, because if you have this product, you have the market, you need to develop a marketing strategy that you are going to use. And here we are going to be using the four P's, which is the product price, place and promotion. When you talk of the product, what, how does, how, what is, how does your product look like? What are the physical attributes of your product? What differentiates your product? What, are, what is your unique selling position, proposition? That's what the, that is what your product is all about. What differentiates it from that of your competitor? You need to talk about, you need to give a, you need to detail what your product is all about. What, how it differentiates from that of other, what makes it different? And you have to talk detailing, and you have to talk about the pricing. As your strategy, what is your price? Is your price higher? If it is high, what, has, what is the competitive advantage you have over others that, make your, that will make a customer to actually buy your product? If it is lower, how are you able to do this? Have you reduced the quality? Because whether it is high or low, it's your competitive advantage and why, and the customer will want to know because we will not dive into buying your product because they think that your product is is, is you have priced it lower than that of your competitors. So you need to talk about your price and everything. Then you need to talk about the place. We talk of the place, how, what is the distribution channel? How will the product get to the customer? You need to talk about it. You need to talk about the distribution. You need to talk about the cost. Are you going to do, uh, uh, are you going to be from manufacturer to the retailer or to the, from the manufacturer to the customer? You need to talk about the dif distribution channel you plan to use. What is the cost to the distribution? To, to the uh, to the customer, 
If somebody buys a goods from you, is there any cost allocated for distribution? What is the time frame it will take for the client to receive that uh, a goods that a customer has ordered from you? So you have to include it. You need to talk about the transaction process. Is it by land, by sea? How is a customer going to pay for it? Is it by mobile money, by bank, by what type of, is, is it open? So you need to put it, if customer pays, are they, if a customer pays late for your product, are there going to be penalties? You need to talk about it in this section of your business plan. If the customer pays on time, are you going to, what is a guarantee? Are you going to give any guarantee for paying on time? You need to mention it on this part of your business plan. Also, you have to talk about the, uh, the, 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 uh, the sales promotion. What are you going to use sales agents for your, for, for, your, for your goods? You have to talk about it. The sales person, who are the agents? That you're going to is there any uh, remuneration that will be given to the motivation? Will they receive training? You need to talk about sales agents that you're going to use for goods. Then promotion, you need to talk about advertising and publicity. That's how to create awareness for your for, for, for the products or the service. Are you going to have a website? Are you are there going to be articles written about your product that will publish on your website that the, 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 the viewer or your customers are going to know more about? So are you going to do campaigns? Are you going to do TV, newspaper, there are a lot that you can do. So you have to detail on how the advertisement and publicity strategy that you are going to use. What are the sales promotion? Are you going to use flyers? Because you know that, like today, people will see flyers just on your way, somebody will give you a brochure, a menu, tell you, oh, there is a very good restaurant here. You need to mention all this promotion that you are planning to use as a marketing strategy for your business plan. Thank you. I'd like us to take from where my colleague has ended and uh, have a look at what exactly it entails to draw up a business plan. Now, when we look at the business plan, we start from an idea. The idea that you have develops into a business. You think of an idea, you transform that idea into a business. But in order to have a successful business, you must set your objectives. Now, once you have set objectives, there is need for you to, that you want to use to attain the objectives. Once you have identified those strategies, is to think of the activities that you are going to put in place in order to attain your objectives. Once that has been done, bring everything that we have written so far into money. You need to do a financial projection, analyzing both your expected income as well as your expected expenditures. Once that aspect of it is done, then we can move on to look critically into the business to say what are the risks that I am going to envisage in carrying out this business. So I was saying, explaining that once we develop our business projection, our financial projection, we have to look at the risk involved in carrying out the business. And it is this risk analysis that will help us to face the future of this business prepared. So now we're going to go into, before going into the developing your strategies, I would like to say that it is, it is very important as an entrepreneur to carry out a SWOT analysis. Now, this SWOT analysis is simply identifying the process in elaborating a business plan. 
And this process starts from an idea. It moves on to developing the idea into a business. After having developed your idea into a business, you need to set your objectives. You develop strategies. You identify activities that you need to carry out in order to attain your objectives. And you transform all of these strategies, activities, and programs that you have identified into a financial project. And then you identify the risk associated with doing that business. It is very important to identify the risk because by so doing, you're going to these mitigation measures. So when we talk about strategies, we're talking about institutional strategies. These institutional strategies will be the kind of changes that you want to see in your business in terms of management, in terms of uh, documents that you want to use for the business. You will also have production strategies. Maybe you are in the process in an agricultural business farming. You want to know what kind of farming methods to use. If you are in a, a trading, you want to know what kind of technological innovations that you need to project in order for your business to move from one point to the other. Now, we need to have monitoring strategies. You're going to project activities. You need to monitor these activities. You need to monitor your employees in case you have people that you employ to work for you. And most especially, you will need to monitor the finances. So it is very important to have a monitoring plan in place when drawing up your business plan. The next thing would be to look at the development strategies. How do you want to expand this business over time? Do you want the business to grow by probably selling more products or offering more services? Or you want to open more outlets for the distribution of your goods and services? All of these are decisions that have to be made when you are drawing up your development player business plan. Once that has been done, you need to go into the operational plan, which is mapping out the day-to-day -day task, the activities that you need to put in place in order for that business to run smoothly. What are the tasks to be achieved? Who is going to do what? When is that person going to do? And how much will it cost for the person to carry out the activities? So once that has been done, the next step in our business planning is the organization and management. You could have your business, you start by having a sole proprietorship, but in five year time, you want to look for a partner. In your business plan, that has to come out, that although I'm a sole proprietorship, in the next three years, I would like to get partner. And what kind of partner do you want to get? What percentage of the business do you want your partner to have? Do you want your partner to be involved in the management or you want the partner to be a silent partner and only participate in the profits? Those are decisions that you need to make and take into consideration with your business plan. So after which you will now draw up an organigram because you have identified who is going to do what. You need to put that structure in the form of a diagram in order to see the flow of the management structure that you're putting in place. You will have to assign the duties and responsibilities to each of these positions in your organigram. And also define what kind of management structure that you would want to put in place and identify the key competencies that you want for your staff of the, the business organization. Now, when all of that is done, 
The next thing that happens is that you need to transform all of this into money. And this is where you do your financial projection. Your financial projection will first start, begin with a cost evaluation. You want to inquire what are the investment needs. Do you need to buy equipment? Do you need to buy a vehicle? Are you constructing? So all of those decisions have to be made and the cost evaluated. After which you then move into evaluating your running cost. What are my charges, the expenses in terms of salary? What is it going to get me in terms of rents, in terms of utilities, does your water bill, electricity, transportation, communication, everything that goes into running the business, you'll need to identify. And what also will be the cost of goods? That's the goods that will be in stock for your business. So all of that needs to be assessed. Once you have done that, based on the sales projection that you had made when you were developing your business plan and setting the objectives, you will evaluate a sales projection for the goods. And uh, my colleague talked about pricing. So by the time we get to the financial uh, uh, projection, you have already identified the price of your goods and services. So you're just taking your sales projection and multiplying by the price that you had set to get a projection of the sales. Once that is done, we continue with the financial projections to do uh, three main uh, financial statements that is required for any business. First is the balance sheet. Our balance sheet is simply a document that in simple terms, a document that indicates the net worth of the business. What is the value of your business? That is what your balance sheet tells you. And the purpose of this balance sheet is to reveal the financial status of the business at any specific point in time. So this balance sheet will show you the of the company or your business. It will show you your assets is what you own. It will also tell you what you owe. That's what you owe to third parties, which is the liabilities. And it will also give you what you have invested in the business, which is the equity. So in simple terms, the assets of the company are the liabilities plus the equity. That is what gives you the assets. And it's very important when you're doing your financial a projection to have a projection also of these financial statements because it tells you what your business will be worth, what is this worth today and what it will be worth in the future. Our next statement to put in place is the income statement. Our income statement is a statement that just tells us two simple things, profit or loss. Are we making profits? Are we making a loss? So this report shows you the revenues that the business has. It gives you the expenses that your business has made and as well as your net income or loss. But once you do proper planning, we should be talking about net income and not net loss because when you're planning for a particular period, let's say three to five years, you're planning to grow, you're planning to make profits. So the income statement helps to guide you and helps to give you a picture of how far you are going in making those profits. And it cautions you and prevents you from making a loss. So it is very important to have that picture in your business plan. And when you're looking at the income statement, you're simply looking at the revenue plus the cost of goods. That will give you the gross profits. You look at the expenses, general administrative expenses and marketing, depreciation, all of that will give you the expenses. And then you have your earnings before taxes. We always talk of income before tax. We don't forget that small businesses are required to pay taxes. Now, if you don't do this properly, you might not know whether making real profit or not, because you could have profit before 
earnings, but the taxes comes and brings it down into a loss. So it's always good for every small business owner to have the financial statements, to have an income statement done for a specific period so that you know where the expenses are, where you can cut down on the expenses in order to maximize your profits and also how much the taxes are weighing on your overall business. Uh, the last financial statement, basic financial statement, because there are so many other statements that we can do, but the last basic financial statement is the cash flow. The cash flow in simple terms, in layman's terms, just summarizes you cash that comes in and cash that is leaving the company. But it is a very important tool because the cash that leaves your company could be cash that is for running cost, but it could also be for investments. So this tool helps you to understand when cash is coming in and to better plan for when cash should go out so that you don't have a disruption in your cash flow. You don't have a situation where you have made a heavy investment and then it's time to pay salaries and you don't have the cash, the liquidity to pay salaries or pay your rents or pay your taxes. So a cash flow statement is very important for all small businesses because it helps us manage even the cash that we're using on day-to-day -day activities. We have to impute them so that we know that this money goes out and it goes out regularly for a particular purpose. Now, after having done all of that, it is important to identify the risk factors that can affect your business. This could be the risk of competition. It could be financial risk. It could be market risk. It could be political risk or economic risk. It could be technological risk, operational risk, or even risk of a pandemic as we are finding today in the case of the COVID-19 or epidemics. If you are in the livestock sector, this is a risk that you must integrate because we know of several epidemics that comes up regularly like the African swine fever, bird flu, and that can really affect your business. Now, when you analyze the risk, it is to look for mitigation measures that you are proposing. Those mitigation measures will tell you as well as third parties that you are actually prepared for this business. And if something comes up, you already have a plan B for that so that your business does not go under the water. So once all of this has been done, the last thing that you do is write the executive summary and you do your cover page. Now, why is it that we do these two things? Although they are first, they come first in our document, we do them at the end. One is because your cover page is what captivates you and third parties. We should always bear in mind that when we draw up a business plan, we are the first consumers of the business plan. The third party, that could be your partners, your, the state, your banks and microfinance institutions, those are third parties. You are the first consumer of your business plan. But if you present a business plan and the cover page is not captivating, Believe me, it doesn't encourage a third party to open. Now, once everybody open, you can have a business plan that is 30 pages. Nobody wants to read 30 pages. So the first thing that they do is read your executive summary. Your executive summary has to give a true picture of what is in the business plan. So if you are summarizing everything that you have developed so far into one page, maximum one and a half page, such that when you hand over this document to a third party and they read your executive summary, you will be able to turn back every now and then to look at the business plan and see what did I plan to do? Is everything going as planned? What are the adjustments that I need to make because you want to grow your business? And this is the guiding tool to grow your business. 
Okay, thank you very much, Madam, for the presentation. So um, we're actually going to move straight away to our questions. And we'll start with um, our first, first trainer, Sylvia Namundo. Um, the first question I have here is, what is the difference between market analysis and background? I don't know if I can take um, a few more and then you, you answer. So um, the next one you'll be answering is, how do we develop business ideas? That's our second question. And the, fourth, the third question, concerning the four piece, can you please throw more light on promotion aspect? So Sylvia, um, if you are ready, you can answer. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Ansel, for that, um, those questions. Um, talk uh, somebody is asking about the difference between market analysis and background. As I earlier explained, I said that doing in your market, market analysis uh, on your background, you are basically talking about like the promoter section and the business section. So on the um, on the promoter section, which is the owner, you are talking about the the, the, the owner who owns the business. You are going to talk about your uh, your educational background. You are going to talk about the educational background. What is your educational background? Those were the aspects we are talking about the, on the background. Previous your competence, the previous places that you have worked on. That's your background. Then on the business as we are talking about if your business is a is, is sole proprietorship, you are going to talk about it. What's the name of your business, the location, and the objective. While I explain that on your markets, or, and then I explain that on the market analysis, you are talking about uh, your, your target market. You are talking about uh, what are the features of your product. Or, uh, like uh, when you're talking about your market, uh, what is the outlook, the gender? What are the, what's, uh, who is your target market? Now you're talking about who you're going to sell to. You have conducted a research. So you now have the people that you're targeting, is it the, by their gender, their income level? What are the trends? How does the market change over time? So those, those are the things you're talking about, your market on market analysis aspect of your business plan. So it's totally different from your background. And to write the market analysis, as I explained, you're talking about the lead time. If somebody processes something, how long, you, what are the competitive advantage? You're talking about your competitors. You're talking about um, what, the, what the edge you have over them, their weaknesses, their strengths, and your roadblocks. So your market analysis is completely different from your background. Then, so, so, okay. okay, then on the question to talk about ideas, there are many ways you can have idea. Maybe uh, your interest, you can have a particular uh, passion or interest, like I mentioned before, that you can have a passion. But in order to prove that your, your passion can be transformed into an idea, that's why you need now a business plan. So your interest is what drives that passion. You, you, they can make use of the internet by doing research based on your areas of interest. Those are some of the ways that you can have ideas. And also, you have to uh, respect to promotion. I said that promotion, you can talk about the advice, advertisement and publicity. So if you, are, um, if you are a consultant, for example, you are supposed to think, okay, what media can I use to sell this my consulting services to the public? That's what they talk about advertising and publicity. There are articles sometimes you go through, maybe a Facebook, you just see a pop-up. They have written something very nice, you like, you read it, you follow the people. That's a, the medium that our consultant has used. That's the medium that our consultant has used to get to you. So when you talk about advertisement and promotion, you must talk about the newspaper. It depends on how it best fits your product. The advertisement campaign you choose depends on the line of your service. If you choose, for example, if, it's, if it is um, an eatery, for example, a restaurant, or can use a media, or maybe somewhere you are passing and you are reading an article where they have talked. Those are advertisement campaign that you can use. They can use a sales promotion, like usually flyers. I'm sure that everyone must have encountered in a situation that you are just passing by the road and somebody gives you a flyer, a brochure that you can read, and you find it very interesting. Oh, this is a designer. You never knew the designer, but just reading the brochure or going through the flyer, you have an interest. How do you assess risk in a business operation? Madam, um, you can answer that. Okay, thank you, Ansel. 
Uh, that's a very pertinent question. To identify risk in a business operation is first to identify what exactly are the operations. For example, if you are in, a, I'll take an example of, let's say you operate a hairdressing salon. You have to identify what are the activities that you carry out. When you identify what the activities that you carry out, you have to look at where there is a possibility that something can go wrong. When that possibility is identified, you know that risk is something you're predicting that can go wrong in the future. So once you have your, your operations, you can say, where can things go wrong? Those are the risk factors. And if it goes wrong, what do I do? Those are the mitigating measures. So once you identify them, not only does it help you to get the mitigating measures, it also helps you to put in preventive measures that things don't go wrong. If there is a possibility of having uh, the rain blow off my dryer, then I need to have a, a, a what do you call this, a search so that whenever there is a power fluctuation, it doesn't blow off my dryer. Those are risk identification and risk prevention measures that you take in a business. And it goes across all the activities that you're doing within the business and your interactions out of the business with your environment. Because there are some risks that comes from the environment, such as political and economic risk, but you need to be prepared in case such a thing comes up, what is it do you do? How do you take on with your business? Is it if, for example, we were prepared for a pandemic like this, maybe some of us would have developed strategies on how to continue to sell our goods and services amidst lockdown and restrictions that have been put in place. So that is the, what we're talking about when we talk of risk identification and risk analysis. Thank you. Okay, madam, um, we'll just take the next question. How can a firm entering a particular line of business develop and maintain a competitive edge over its competitors? Okay, in my presentation, I talked about the SWOT analysis. That's a very important tool that you do because the SWOT analysis helps you not only identify your strengths that's within the organization, it helps you to analyze the environment, to develop a competitive advantage over others in the same business and in the same industry. You have to know what they're doing. You have to know what goods and services they are giving, so uh, to uh, offering to their clients. You have to know how they are offering those goods and services. You have to know what promotional strategies they are doing. And then you can decide now to see how you can differentiate yourself. It is that aspect of differentiating yourselves that gives you the competitive advantage over the others. And that is your unique in your business model comes from how you differentiate yourselves. It could be in the quality of the product. It could be in the presentation of the product or service. It could be in the delivery of the product or service. Or it could be in the after sales uh, a delivery for your product or service. So you can use that to identify your competitive advantage over your, the competitors. I may use the repetition of the word. Okay, uh, okay, madam. Um, we have this question in French. Dans quel mesure on doit choisir entre le business model et le business plan? Uh, madam, please unmute your microphone. So permit me answer in English, please, so that I'll be, I can explain fluently. Now, your business model, like I say, when you get a competitive advantage, you identify that uniqueness. It is what helps you to develop a business model. Your business model is the value proposition that you are offering to your clients. And like I say, it could be in the product or service, the packaging or the delivery of the product or service. Now the business plan is a tool that projects how you want to propose this model to your clients and evolve over a particular period. So once you have identified, you must have your model. Your model will, is part of the plan. 
because in your business plan, you will be telling us your business model. How do you want to present your business? How do you want us to perceive your business? And how do we want us to appreciate and value the business? That is the business model that you will be presenting in your plan, which is a projection of how you want to evolve over a particular period of time. Thank you. This question from Peter Seca says, how can a startup business operator start drawing up a business plan with little or no idea on the business world? And how can one determine the best managerial post that can help startup business operators? Okay, thank you. That's a very pertinent question. Because if I look at the attendance list, I think all of us attending here already into one business or the other. But normally the norm prescribes before you even start the business. Once you have the idea, you have to develop a business plan before you start. The business plan, when you don't develop the business plan before you start, you just get your idea, you go rent a shop, start selling this good or offering the service, you're acting like our first uh, friend, Peter, who gets up in the morning and doesn't have an objective and just goes and goes. But when you have a business, when you have that idea, you have to first of all sit and plan and put down everything before you know that you are ready to start or not. Because when you don't even know how much the business will cost you to operate and if it is going to be profitable and at what point you're going to break even, the Frenchman says you're, it's blind navigation that mm -hmm. you're doing. So what I am trying to say is that what we are trying to do now is to catch up on what we should have done when we started our businesses. Now, to do the business that you want to do, you must have research. That's why we say when you have an idea, it has to be transformed into a business. That is when you start researching on this idea that you have. If I want to open a service delivery company, I have to do research. What does it entail to do that? Who are those who are already in that business? What are they doing? What are they offering? How are they doing it? Where are they? Because that will help you in the choice of location. My colleague uh, talked about location as one of the things that you state. But your location does not come because you like or because it's closer to your house. It must come from the research that you have done and see the need. At the back of your mind, we must always remember that we are proposing a product or service. It is to solve a problem that we have identified. So that when you put that at the back of your mind, you are able to do the right research in that area and say that either I go ahead with this or I don't go ahead with it. Or if I have to go ahead with it, this is how I have to tailor my business. This is the kind of value proposition that I will have for the business. And these are the kind of types of persons that I will need. To know the persons that you need, you have to first know what you're doing or what you intend to do. It is then that you can say, if I have to do this, then I need this person with this kind of competence in the business to recruit. So those are some of the tips that I can give for the moment. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Madam. The questions are so many, but we have limited time. So we'll would have to close this um, session. Over to you, Madam. Thank you, Ansel. But I'll, I'll just take this opportunity to reassure people that we're going to answer all your questions and send to you. This is the first training amongst a series of training that we intend to give. We intend to have a five model training and at the end of the fifth model, each and every one of you would have had your business plan drawn. We are going to assist you to draw up a business plan. Now, the next four sessions of the business will be based on the content that we have given you today, we're going to go deeply in and accompany you to write on each of this com content so that along, as we go along, we accompany you to draw up your business plan and begin now to your business plan like an entrepreneur and grow.